Well, let's go through the workflow for creating modular architecture. Go into the Blueprints Modular Construction folder, and there you'll find all the blueprints you need to make buildings. To get started quickly, just drag a BP pre-built 12 by 18 blueprint into the scene. This pre-built blueprint lets you make a quick building one floor at a time. With a floor choice drop down, you have a selection of floor configurations to use. If you drag the building around or change something in the parameters, the windows will change and randomize. I'll pick floor C. You have your choice of three trims, which are nicely normal mapped. There's trim A, there's B, let's see. You can also enable a two meter foundation in case your building is on uneven ground. To make another floor, make sure your grid snapping is set to about 50 units. Then just duplicate the object on the z-axis and drag. Let's turn off the foundation. And I'll set this to let's see B. We'll do second floor C. Now I'll just drag another and make that one the windowed one. Cool. And I'll just add a flat roof just temporarily. Now by default, a brick material is applied to all the architectural blueprints, but it's there for you to override. In the materials category, we have a drop-down box for valid materials to use on the walls or the floors. We can also override the small interior spaces too. So for the walls, maybe we can do a uh, there's brick and stone, kind of cool. There's simple plaster. I have plaster red and a bunch of other ones. I'll leave uh, I'll leave this tan plaster enabled. Now let's add a roof. If we go back into the module construction folder, we have BP roof 12 by 18. We just drag that into the scene, rotate it, and I'll just move it into position. Now while this object doesn't have any material overrides, it does let you toggle parts of the roof for performance gains. So if, for example, this building is on the edge of your level, you may not need to render the opposite side of the roof. So you can just turn on the remove side one or remove side two, and you'll just quickly optimize the roof. So we can remove the cap, remove the other cap, or you can remove the tops of the roof as well. Now these look really cool up close, nicely normal map, there's nice geometry, but they also LOD as you get further away to pretty much a flat polygon. Now of course I don't like all my buildings to be the same rectangular shape, so the next level of granularity can be found using BP facades. Let's just drag one of those in. Facades are three-sided building chunks that you can place to add variety to the profile of a building. And just like a larger building, you get a selection of floors and trims to choose from. So for example, the way you would place these is you find the open end and just put it against the wall. I'll line this up. You can add the foundation and I'll add a second floor as well. Let's change the material down here to plaster red. You can add roofs to the facades by using BP roofs. So let's grab one, drag it in. And just like everything else, you do have roof mesh options. So if we're placing the edge of the roof, you want to use the edge pieces. If you're placing the center of the roofs, you want to use the tile pieces. So let's just use an edge six meter. Is that in position? Yep, that's good. To get the cap of the roof, change the cap mesh. We probably need to rotate this. There we go. And the facades use an eight meter cap. That's why I chose eight there. Just to show you what the difference is. 
but they go all the way up to 18 if you want to make a gigantic building. And I'll just finish off this roof. I'll quickly add some ground walkway objects using BP ground. So in this list we have ground trims which are great for putting around the bases of buildings where the wall meets the ground. We have uh, these modular simple uh, boxy platforms to walk on. They come with different sizes. We have uh, a variety of stairs. We also have elevated wood walkways of different lengths to match up with the buildings as well as a stairway and cap. Now that we have the ground, let's make the facade a little more interesting. Add a BP Arches blueprint. This blueprint contains all the possible arch and arch walkway configurations you can place on the map. You place these against buildings, uh, in between buildings, there's some that span uh, far across uh, paths. Uh, so for this one, let's do arch facade. These arches are meant to be placed against walls of buildings uh, above doors. So find the open end and just put it against the wall. Notice where the pivot is in relation to this object. It's on the ground, so the mesh height is already set up for you. Let's drag it and create a arch facade end. Let's align it with the end of the building. Just copy them down. We'll do another arch facade end, but this time we'll just turn on the flip arch facade end option. And there we go. Now we can get an even more granular configuration for architecture. Grab a BP modular walls object and drag it into the scene. This will allow you to place individual walls in the space for the most variety. Uh, the same sort of options apply. We have uh, plain walls, windowed walls, and second floor pieces and corners. And there are more here because you can just specify the length of the wall as well in two, four, or six unit variants. So I'll just go ahead and start placing some. To help cover up some of the texture seams between the modular pieces, I added wall supports. So if we click on this wall here and we add wall support end, it'll just seal up that seam with a nice piece of wood. Now we can extend the use of those wall supports by using the wall support drop down. Since we're using a 6 meter piece, let's use the support 6 meter object. So that's pretty cool. You can also do it to the second floor pieces as well. This uses a six meter second floor. And we'll turn on the wood support end there as well. BP gate B, A, door old two and door old are all your doorway options for modular architecture. So let's drag a BP gate B into the scene. And each one of those is uh, 200 units in width. So we'll just push it back there. And of course we have our choice of trim, the foundation, and we have gate type. So this is the dual thin gate. We can also do a wide gate or a thin gate, which is a singular door. What's also cool is we can change the door rotation. So we can open them, close them, swing them. It's cool for decoration. And of course, material overrides. So I'm just gonna finish up the rest of this wall here.